we are going to look at querying data in Snowflake. And I want to show you a couple of the intricacies with this and provide for you a basic script that you can go ahead and utilize. What's up, YouTube? Greg Treziak here with another edition of Let It Snow with Pragmatic Works. Now, what I've included down below is a class file that contains the script that you're gonna use for today's demonstration. While you're grabbing those class files, I'll let you know that you need to definitely subscribe to the Pragmatic Works On Demand Learning and check out the newest Snowflake classes that are gonna be there for you. Lots of great things, but we're gonna go into a lot more specifics of loading and querying the data in my brand new class. It looks very similar to something like this, right? And what it's gonna be labeled is our first Snowflake query. Once you grab that text file, you can go ahead and open it up and copy the contents. From there, you're gonna create in Snowflake a new SQL worksheet. Make sure you're logged in to a Snowflake instance and make sure as well you're the account admin. That'll allow us to do everything under the sun. Now, in your free trial, you are going to get access to a lot of Snowflake sample data. This is going to be super great because now you can practice your loading, movement of data, and querying skills in a free sample data set. In fact, there is a bunch of free sample data sets of various sizes. You could have one terabyte to, hey, something super small to 10 terabytes, whatever you name it, you've got it. Now, to create that SQL worksheet, you're gonna go up to the plus sign right here on the left-hand side of your Snowflake menu. There, you can add SQL worksheet. With that SQL worksheet, you're gonna see a tab open up here in this project view. You can also go to this projects view and build a worksheet from that location as well. So whatever your preference is, there's two ways to get there. The Snow Site user interface is super smooth, so easy enough to grab it. I'm gonna go back to home and check out our first Snowflake query, which is my SQL worksheet that's ready to go. Now, a couple important things to notice when you are querying. When you're querying, it's important to notice what is the database you are using, what is potentially the schema you're using, and finally, what is the actual table that you're after. You also wanna consider up here, what is your current role? Different roles may or may not have access to certain actions or even at all to the data you're looking for. Additionally, you're gonna see your warehouse like the one I have here, my compute underscore warehouse, which is an extra small size. These are all important areas to note before you start querying. As you begin querying, you'll notice that checking those items is very crucial to getting a proper query with less errors. Well, in our sample script today, we've got three steps. Let's dive into step one and try to see kind of where we start from there. Step one here is we just wanna view some data. And this is where if you have any existing SQL knowledge, this comes into play and you're gonna be able to really run with in Snowflake. Also, you would have noticed if we do the plus sign here, there's a Python worksheet. So you can leverage Python as well with a few extra steps. So let's say I wanna view some data. I've got the infamous select star. This is gonna allow me to bring in the data from is the next statement. And then we'll see this listed database here, which is my snowflake underscore sample data. Everybody's got that. That's what we're working with. You can use that as well. From here, you'll see the next kind of organization piece, which is known as your schema. Schema is kind of like a folder, something is for storage, and it lets us know a little bit more details. This particular sample Snowflake data set ultimately leads us from this schema to the customer table. So we're gonna look at some customer information. And you know what we're gonna do? We're also gonna put a limit on this to 10. So we're gonna limit what we query from this sample data set to 10. This will just give us a preview, not use up as much compute resources, and limit the loading times really nice and 10 rows easy. 
You'll also see at the very end here the semicolon to kind of denote we are finished with that action. What you'll do is highlight the entire area here from select all the way down to the semicolon. Now what you can do is go ahead and press run with this play button icon right here. Let's see a preview of this, get the results of the query by grabbing it from this customer information. I'll press run and it's thinking about it, boom. All right, 1.2 seconds, I've got my answer right here. And you can see one to 10, we've got 10 rows, our limit has also worked. So where we're querying the data is from the Snowflake sample database. We are also grabbing it from the TPC schema followed by the customer table. Now this is really, really great for us. Now we're doing a select statement and you'll also notice I'm just running this on my database here. I'm gonna go to Snowflake sample data and run this as well. I have select access here. So from that sample data, if you don't have a current database, you can just use that one right there, all right? You have the ability through your own database and this to leverage this sample data, which makes it a breeze to have some fun and actually get more involved in it. Now I want to look at the data and then I want to up our game a little bit. So here we have our customer key, the names, their addresses, a national key, a phone, an accent, ball, something, I don't know, a market segment, you name it, and even some comments here. So a lot of good things that we can work with. What if I wanted to do a little bit of filtering here? So another essential SQL item that you should have in mind is going to be the WHERE clause. The WHERE clause is going to allow us to provide a condition to our query. We are also going to limit what we're bringing in because there's a lot that we're bringing in and I don't think I need all of that information. So I'm going to select a certain number of columns and I now can see with my select start the names. So if you actually want to make a change, you can do so. If I don't want customer key, I can get rid of it. If I don't want the name, I can get rid of it. Nation key, et cetera. You know what? I don't really know if I want the nation key. I might actually make the choice here to change this and replace it with address. Now, what you'll notice is this snow site interface is going to give you two suggestions as you make this change. Here it's letting me know, hey, this is the other column that you are probably trying to reference here. I can simply press tab and bring it in and now I've changed it to the address. Again, we're grabbing it from the Snowflake sample database, the schema over here, and then the table. But our where clause is this particular column must say automobile. Let's run it, let's see how that looks. So I'll select all of these, kind of highlight them, and then we'll press run one more time. And all right, we've got everything that says automobile right there. And I made that change to this script because I didn't really want the nation key. I wanted the address. I got the address. I can continue to manipulate this. Now you'll notice in this command, I really didn't do a limit. What instead was I have a lot more here. So my query duration wasn't too bad, but now I'm looking at a lot more rows that I'm bringing through, right? We went from a limit of 10 to, oh man, we're at like 27,000. So we really upped the game here. One last thing that I want to show you here is let's go ahead and add some sorting to this. I'm really not going to change much of my query here. The only thing that has been added on to the end is order by. Order by is going to allow me to actually sort the results of the query. By doing this, I can see those early customer keys first or later, and I can change and make some edits to what I really want. So what if I run this statement here for step three? I'll go ahead and run it. And now we're going to have the exact same information minus I have nation key here, not the address, and it is ordered by the customer key. So Number one mustn't have been a automobile, but number two sure is, and it's going descending from there. That is super cool, and now we're able to organize this. One thing I wanna note here is I just ran this query, and it took about 791 milliseconds. That's pretty fast. But if there were a larger instance 
where I was using a lot of time, I might decide to upgrade the size of my warehouse. Currently, I'm using an extra small warehouse, so I'm gonna change this to Greg's warehouse, which I've pre-built and is a medium size. And as I make the change here, I'm gonna run the same statement again. Now I have 791 milliseconds. What would happen if I change the warehouse size? I'll go ahead and hit run and boom. We went down to 59 milliseconds. Now there is a cost to this, right? When we upgrade the size of the warehouse, we are using more compute resources and it's usually a higher price there. But we have faster querying times. Hopefully you liked this introduction into querying the data, learned a couple of things, whether it was using select, where, or order by, or even the warehouse sizes. Tell you the truth, I've got a lot more for you in my brand new class, Loading and Querying Data in Snowflake. I really want to see you there. So make sure you use Greg40. Get a subscription to our on-demand learning. I'll definitely see you there. And remember, stay frosty.